Hello to all our viewers and welcome to Morning Blend. I'm Rowan Sadanti and today I have a new partner in crime. I'm Diyamika Jaram. It's great to be here. Today on our show we've got Julia Robertson and Ashram, Indians in sports, and Bombay shutting down. Let's right. get to it. Great. So our first topic today deals with my favorite actress, Julia Roberts, and she's shooting a movie called Eat, Pray, Love. And it's a book written by Elizabeth Gilbert. And essentially, Julia Roberts in the movie travels to an ashram in India for an extended period of time. And Hindu rights activists are worried that the Indian religion, the ascetic life, etc., will be misportrayed in this film, as it typically does in Western movies. I'm very worried about that exact same thing. Well, let's back up a little. This film is based on a book written about this woman's experiences after she broke up. She wanted to have a life-changing experience. She took a trip to Italy, India, and I think Indonesia. But basically, she spent four months in this ashram, and the movie is about her experience there. I'll give you I, that. Yeah, I don't think we necessarily have to say, oh, no, they didn't. They shouldn't do it just because, you know, yada, yada, yada. They have to be careful. It's, in, it's Hinduism. Maybe, but let's look at what this movie is about. Brad Pitt is producing. Julia Roberts is acting. They have a yeah. whole host of other actors. Have you them? Oscar winners? Yeah. Exactly. Movies are powerful, especially one like this. It's going to have a million dollar budget. It's going to go all across the world. It's going to be a billion dollar movie. It's going to reach people. Right. I'm, Which means they should be that much more careful considering that the subject matter here is the religion and, and the experience of this religious true. ashram. I think they should be that much more careful, but I don't think that's enough reason to say, nah, -uh, don't do it. Don't well, here's another it. reason why I think they should just stay away from it. We all saw Slumdog Millionaire and how, in my mind, gory a depiction it was of Indian society. A bunch of the crew from Slumdog Millionaire has joined this movie and this film. But that's the point. That was a movie about that segment of Indian culture. This movie is about her experiences. It's, I think you can't just say, oh, those four months, just because it's a touchy subject, we're going to throw that out. We're not going to include it. Ashrams are a very particular part of the Hindu experience, and I think that's something that they need to be aware of. And like you said, this is a huge, multi-million dollar, big budget movie. Right. But that doesn't, I mean, you can't just step away from a subject because you go, oh, you know, I think this is a little too serious. You attack it. That means you're well, that much more conscientious and aware of what you're getting yourself into. I'm definitely going to see it. And Absolutely. we'll have to see how they do. Julia Roberts, our favorite actress. I'm definitely going to watch Julia Roberts. Aaron Brockovich, one of my favorite movies. Uh, let's continue on to our next topic, which is about Twitter. Uh, not the American Twitter, as we all know. Are you on Twitter, Yamka? I am not. Are okay. you going? I actually, I actually am sort of, but I'll explain that. <laughs> Basically, the Indian version of Twitter, it's called Gupshuff. Gupshuff. Uh, it's a texting version of Twitter, however. Right. So you don't actually have to have online capabilities on your phone. You just text. Um, late last year, they had about 7 million people on Gupshuff. Now they have 20 million. Blowing up. That's fantastic. Quick question for you. Yeah. Do you have any Indian friends our age that are on Twitter? Actually, yeah. We were talking about that before, and none of my Indian friends are on Twitter that I know of, really. Me neither. Why do you think that is? Well, I can say for me personally, I'm not a big fan of Twitter. I mean, you're in line at the grocery store to buy grapes. Buy your grapes. Get on with your life. Okay, I might agree with that point slightly, but look at the world we live in. We live in a world of instant information. This is our generation. This is the cutting edge of social networks. You can connect with people like never before. And I'll agree that it has, you know, performed an invaluable tool in the Bombay attacks last year. You know, people were Twittering their locations. That's how law enforcement officials in Tehran with all of this elections in Iran. Absolutely. Been useful. But still, at the end of the day, as far as the social media is concerned, you can only express yourself in 140 characters. In 140 characters, I would say, in shower, use loofah. I love... This is exactly how you connect to your celebrities and to everyone in power. I don't need to know that. That is not anything of substance. That is Twitter not anything... Twitter has so of... many uses in addition to just stalking people, which is probably one of my favorites. Creepy! Not at all. I love the fact that Twitter, you can do that. I love the fact that it's an instant information source. CNN, The Economist, Forbes, they all have Twitters. You only get 140 characters worth of information. That's dumbing it down to, like, the lowest degree. The whole... I would rather you go online, check out CNN headlines, and say, all right, this is what I actually need to know about there this There you topic. go. Just by going to CNN, you're proving my point that Twitter itself is perfect for you. CNN, its job is to take complicated subjects and dumb them down for the Agreed, audience. Agreed, but they don't dumb it down to 140 letters or less. Well, I think Twitter's great. Clearly, India does too. Then again, I don't even use it. So Exactly, what are you talking about? Time. Moving on. Vanity Fair just released its international best dress list. This is a list that they release annually, and they... Is it, is it a pretty big deal, or...? 
in this world. It's a pretty big deal. I'd say it I is. I check it out every year. I okay. like to know who's in the what. I've heard of that too. In any case, this list, which is supposed to be international, has an overwhelming majority of American participants, less from other countries, and this has drawn the irk of a leading Hindu American activist, um, a gentleman by the name of Rajan Zed, who said, hey, listen, you're supposed to be international, but you've got like 38, I think, of the 49 are either live or are American. Do you see a problem with this? Because I really don't. The fact that it's an international best dress list says we are taking people from across societies, across cultures. Balenciaga shouldn't necessarily be your favorite designer in order to qualify for this list. When you think of sort of the fashion capitals of the world or like the icons of fashion right now, what do you think of? You think of sort of location-wise, Paris, New York. When you think of people, mm -hmm. think of you know Michelle Obama, Nicholas Sarkozy's wife, who was in all those pictures that we know about. We Gorgeous. think of like world leaders, or we think of like actresses and singers in America, or maybe some in Europe and the United Kingdom. Well, I mean, you're, let's, I think let's focus this down to India or the southeast sort of okay. area. What? What, who do you see there that could have been on the best dress list? And do you think it's really in our culture? Well, I think here's the biggest thing. I think that we shouldn't confuse fashion with best dress. Best dress just says, hey, listen, I'm putting together an outfit. I'm p putting together a wardrobe that best represents who I am and that puts my best personality forward. Okay. I think dressing and, and your style of dressing does not necessarily have to indicate high couture or high fashion. That said, yeah, I think there are plenty of women. I mean, Sushma Basen, gorgeous. Every time you see her in a magazine, she's got her hair perfectly She's got an outfit that puts her best attributes out there. True. I think she looks great. I think she rocks what she wears every single time, and I think she deserves some consideration. She does deserve consideration, and she is a beautiful person. Gorgeous. But this is also about sort of your power in the world. It's not just a list on. I, it's not just a list on whether you can put yourself together and represent yourself the best. It's also of who has the most reach, who has the most power. Any best dress list is like that. It's who has right. the most connections and things like that. Right. What is cool about this list is that there's an Indian American.